written by Atul Fugad with the help of John Carney, who played King T. Chaka in Black Panther and Winston Shona in 1972. The classic comedic South African play explores diligently the themes of identity, immigration, racism, colonization, segregation, identity, memory, legacy, and many others. The play opens with a studio photographer called Style as he reads an article about an automobile plant in his studio which is located in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. He begins telling numerous stories about his time as a factory worker at the Ford Motor Company, how he and his black co-workers were often exploited by their capitalist white bosses at work, and some other racist things that happened when he was working there. He continues discussing the story until a man called Sizwe Bansi comes and interrupts him. Sizwe Bansi wants to take a photograph, although he now refers to himself as Robert Swellinzima, which is his fallacious name he has newly adopted to change his identity. Sizwe tells, tells that he wants his photo taken and he wishes to send the photo back to his wife and children in the village. After the photo is out, Next to it is Siswe Banti, writing a letter to his wife, in which he informs his wife that Siswe Banti no longer exists because he is now dead, and a man called Robert Swellinzima has taken his place. Through the letter, Siswe narrates his experiences when he left his country town for Port Elizabeth and the city. In a town where a black man's identity and acceptance solely depends on an apartheid institutionalized passbook he has to carry. He tells her that he met his old friend, Sola, who gave him a place to stay and helped him to look for a job. But unfortunately, jobs were hard to get by for him and fails to get even a single one because he doesn't have a valid passbook. So because of the fatal job hunt, the local authorities of Port Elizabeth inform Sizwe Bansi that he has three days to leave town for his home. In that situation, he becomes so worried. Zola encourages him to go and see a mutual friend called Buntu to help. As Zola is hopeful that Buntu will find work for Sizwe. In auspicious, the literate Buntu reads the passbook and confirms Sizwe's dreaded situation and recommends that Sizwe Banti return to his own village, the William King's town, to his wife and four children who he can work in the mines because the three day grace period is already expired. But Sizwe Banti is terrified at the prospect of working in the mine as he thinks it's too dangerous for him. Later on, the men begin trying anything they can to help him out, but they still face difficulties. Buntu takes Sizwe to a local bar called Sky's Place to help cool him off. They have a nice drink until they leave. When the men leave the bar, Buntu goes into an alleyway to urinate and runs into a dead body on the ground. He notifies Sizwe Bansi about this. They, they first consider reporting the body to the police, but realize since they are just black men living in an utterly racist apartheid system, they will likely be falsely implicated for killing the men. So in fear of their lives, they leave the dead men on the ground where they saw him, but they take away his passport and go to Buntu's house. When they got home, they discovered the passport actually has a job seeker's permit stamp. Fortunately, something that Sizwe Banti is actually looking for to stay in Port Elizabeth at this moment. So, Buntu recommends that he dispose his own original passport and start using the passbook as his own. The name of the passbook is called 
Robert Solintima. So Bunti replaces the photograph of the man in the passbook with panties. Sizwe is reluctant about this, but accepts to use the name anyway. That is why he stays back in Port Elizabeth, beyond the three days that was left for him in his former passport. It now looks as if all has been resolved, as Sizwebanti has found a new identity and a solid way to stay. However, Sizwe rightfully is still worried about what this identity switch is going to mean for his family, who still hold the name Banti. As he notes that there is a possibility that he may not have any legal marital rights because technically he is married to his wife under the name or his original name Sizwe Banti in the marriage certificate and not Solintima. The play ends in the same scene where it began, back at the photography studio, where Sizwe is having his picture taken, and we see that he wrote the letter with the new picture he took in the studio of style and sent it to his wife. Fugard wrote the play while he was a law clerk at Native Commissioner's Court in Johannesburg. Due to the South African pass laws, which aimed to segregate working-class black men. Every black man was legally obligated to carry a passbook that would limit his employment and travel throughout the country. The play demonstrates the apartheid system of South Africa, which lasted into the early 1990s. Apartheid was a form of institutionalized racism that ensured segregated facilities, events, employment opportunities, and land apportionment. The laws benefited the white minority in South Africa and caused economic hardships on the black South Africans, the effects of which are still prevalent today. It demonstrates the apartheid policies at that time, the discrimination, the racial discrimination, and the treatment of the blacks especially the skinned and the black skin in the South African society. This is when several blacks were imprisoned as a result of their quest for independence to be free from apartheid policies at that time. So, the apartheid policy gives superiority to the whites and the blacks were considered inferior. People like Nelson Mandela, Dennis Goldberg, or the blacks were imprisoned because of their actions, which were totally against the provisions or the policies of apartheid. Thus, the author Atoll Fugard portrayed the situation and the discrimination against some of the black Africans who are of black skin. If you have an African novel you want to see Dudu summarize, do not hesitate to comment below don't forget to subscribe for more original, great Afrocentric content like this. Thanks for watching Mimsy Dudu Summaries.